cards. Okay, recording in progress. And just as I was letting in Danusia Sautyska, welcome Danusia, welcome everybody. It's really nice to have such a nice group of people. Okay, so maybe, maybe not to steal your precious time, I will just very briefly introduce you and your webinar. In the chat box, I will also provide all the webinar participants with some useful links, like useful, uh, the link to YouTube, Facebook channel, Instagram, and so on. So please have a look at it. And if you want to use it, you can use it and uh, join IATF activities. Um, uh, and uh, I would like just to present to, to you uh, our today's uh, speaker, that is Rob Howard, who is owner of Business Language Training Institute, and who is also, and that is a very important uh, piece of information for all of us, uh, a joint coordinator of IATF BC. Uh, uh, Rob has the whole range of interests and he is a very active and very helpful person, which I, being the webinars coordinator, really appreciate and would like to thank you for it once again. Uh, uh, so Rob is active with other activities, but Rob is active uh, in our webinars uh, se uh, sessions. And uh, thanks to him, we have opened up this new subject uh, that is business communication and business English, which is very valuable for all of us. So thank you once again. Um, and Rob has been active with uh, IATEFU for, uh, for a long time already. He has been this joint coordinator of business English uh, special interest group for a year. Uh, uh, and I myself was even participating in the recent online conference uh, which was really fascinating and uh, and very inspiring, I think, for all of us participants. Um, also, Rob has been traveling all over the world, uh, so he has very good uh, practical uh, information about the different cultures. Uh, uh, he is the founder of EFL Talks uh, for over has been uh, in this for over six years. He is, to begin with, he's a professional speaker. He's been speaking for 14 years, which is a long time. And so uh, uh, we are really grateful to you, Rob, that you are with us. And I would like to mention the fact that Rob has already presented uh, one webinar uh, in this uh, school academic year. Uh, that was on the 20th of October, and uh, the title was uh, Classroom to Boardroom. Very, very insp uh, inspiring webinar, and I advise you to watch it on our YouTube channel. Yes, that was preparing learners for the workplace. And we also have the next webinars with Rob scheduled one webinar for the 2nd of February and then another two in April and June. So keep in touch with us. Thank you very much, Rob. So let's move over to that's what I said, not what I, but not what I meant, uh, referring to competency in intercultural communication, uh, to uh, the situations when there are some basic misunderstandings uh, because of our varying or different cultural backgrounds and how to deal with this problem. Very practical, very useful information. Over to you, Rob. Great. Well, thank you so much. Let me see. We have some more people in the waiting room to come in. Okay. I will start letting. So I will take over letting them in. Yes, Great. I will let them in. There are more than 30 people already with us. And I'll bring my slides. Um, I'll keep an eye on the chat room. So um, if you have any questions or comments, we'll see. But I'm going to leave time at the end. Uh, this is basically an hour long. I only have five minutes of material, though, so I'll just keep saying it over and over again. No, I'm joking. Um, first of all, I don't see a lot of familiar names, which is good. But I want to apologize. Number one, my voice is pretty bad because I talk too much. But hopefully... It'll last for the next hour. 
And I have to apologize. My English isn't very good. I'm American. So bear with me. I hope you understand. It's much better than my Polish. So, jen dobre. And that's all you're going to get out of me. So, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And I hope that you're all IATFO Poland members. I know I am. And so, this is just some of me. Oh, hello from Iraq. Uh, some of the things that I do. Um, I've been online now for 20 years. And I also keep busy. I'm all over the place. So, uh, I want to talk about a little bit of the problems that we have dealing with culture. Now, primarily, I'm teaching business English students. Um, but I do a lot of special. Well, isn't this a happy house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is not a happy house. Well, you just said this was a happy house. Well, that's not what I meant. It was sarcasm. Well, who the hell knows what you mean when you won't say what you mean? <laughs> okay, maybe you could be a little less strict and a little more loving. <laughs> Okay, Kitty. Enough with the sarcasm. So, sarcasm. A little levity to get us started. Um, sarcasm, like a lot of the communication that we do, leads to a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of miscommunication. And this is what we want to talk about is the problem that we have dealing with miscommunication uh, based on cultural differences of the people. So, you know, people, I deal globally, and I'm sure a lot of you, if you're dealing with companies, or even if you're dealing with university students, are finding that you're dealing with more and more mixed cultures, just like we have a mix of pencils here. Now, let's take a look at some of the things that cause trouble with communication. Could be accent, could be pronunciation, it could be the difference of grammar, vocabulary, it could be the rate of speed of the speaker, or it could be based on national norms. We'll talk more about that later. Now, we add into this that we have a mixture of different L1s. Our L2, we have a mixture of levels there. The accuracy of the language. Then we have problems with culture, with context, and the perspective. Now, add to that the business aspect. Where is the power coming from within the business? Is it driven by profit? What's the control? What's the need and the use and the motive behind the conversation? And when we start putting these all together, being a business English teacher is a lot of work. Because we have a lot of different aspects that we have to overcome within the same classroom, if we're talking groups, and also within companies when we're talking even one-to-one. -one. So every class, every student is different. And this makes for an even bigger challenge being an English teacher these days. Now, let's take a look at some of the issues that conflict. Verbal communication styles and nonverbal communication styles. Attitudes towards conflict. Some people like to come right out 
and take care of the conflict as it happens. Some keep it inside. Different approaches to completing tasks, decision-making styles, and how much information am I going to disclose about myself, the company, the situation. Now, <coughs> excuse me, we have this thing called the transparency illusion. And that basically comes down to we all think when we're communicating that we're communicating perfectly and clearly. Even though we really haven't done much to make sure that we are. Now, I'm assuming that most of you here are English teachers. You have at least a B2 level of English, so I'm sure that you're understanding me. But I didn't check beforehand, so I could be speaking to A1, A2s who have no idea what I'm saying. So this is the idea behind transparency. I'm sure most of you are C1, C2, so you understand everything. Plus, we tend to be in communication what are called cognitive misers. It means we don't think very much. We're very lazy when it comes to thinking about communication. Because in our own language, we really don't have to think that much anymore. Now, Nobel Prize winner, you may be familiar with Daniel Kahneman, says there's two systems of people. System one people get information quickly. They use shortcuts. They make conclusions about other people based on body language, facial expressions. And we have this whole idea of the primacy effect. And we know this when we first meet someone we tend to make a judgment. And they say that first impressions last a lifetime. Now, this happens with System 1 people. We see them, maybe they remind us of somebody that we hated in the past. And we draw conclusions about them. This will affect communication. Now, System 2 people are more conscientious. They're a little more rational. But they have more demands on the effort and the mental energy to form a second impression. So most people are cognitive misers. They tend to trade off speed for accuracy when they're thinking about others, and perception usually ends with system one. For example, I can tell you, in the United States, I'm from Boston. Now, most people from Boston in New York, the second they hear a southern accent, and people are talking like this, and they're from Tennessee, or Texas, or whatever, they have this prejudice in a stereotype that the person is stupid, not well-educated, absolutely wrong. But we tend to quickly make decisions about other cultures based on everything but communication. So... Here's some of the things that we have to worry about. Difference of sophistication level in their language. And we all know false friends. These are the things that we constantly deal with. And we'll talk about this later. But confusion. This causes confusion when it comes down to communication. And I'll give you just a few basic examples. Inhabitable is a place 
that is habitable. Inhumane is the opposite of humane. Inflammable and flammable are the same. Incombustible and combustible are not. So think about your second language learner who's encountering these words. The prefix in is not always a negative prefix. Sometimes it's an intensifier. And if they don't know these specific words, we have a problem in communication. Now, you know, no means no, except in Polish when it can mean yes. I still can't figure that out. But eventually can mean possibly. Actually can mean current. These are the false friends. And I don't know how, but a transparent is a poster or a banner. So when we're talking about transparency, and somebody may have a lower level of English, are we communicating what we mean to communicate? Now, three specific words that I came across in working with Russian students that we have a problem with. These words, effectively, efficiently, and productively. Now, they have specific meanings in American English and in British English, as you can see here. But let's think about somebody who's not a native speaker. And when we're talking in Russian, effectively means effectively, but efficiently can mean effectively also. And productively means efficiently if they go with the meaning of the false friends. So this can be a problem with intercommunication between the countries. So if you see here in American English, I'm talking result, effort, and quantity. Whereas in Russian, they're thinking result in effort, miscommunication in business. So what is the intention? The word cheap, do I mean inexpensive? Do I mean garbage? Do I mean economical? Or is it misheard and I mean sheep? Think about the miscommunications with just the simple word. Now, words do have weight. For example, Research shows that 85% of you think that I'm brilliant. You can all agree in the chat room if you'd like. Just put a Y. Just put yes, you think I'm brilliant, right? Hopefully it's more than 85%. It's because the, when we use the word research, we take research as fact. And just using the simple word research, it could be fake news. And this is what fake news takes advantage of, is the meaning and the weight behind certain words. Ah, smart and creative. Thank you, Doris. So there's a message behind the meaning. And I'll give you one example. John says you should have John help you you should have John help out with the project next time. Now what the woman is thinking, I can't believe he doesn't think I can do it on my own, when actually he was thinking she deserves a break. She needs help. So it's a miscommunication based on a difference in culture. This is why we're not communicating and we don't question it. Now, think about position. Now, this I did this a few years back. I've been on the BSIG committee now for 
I think a little over three years um, in different positions. And this is actually our old committee members and where we're originally from. Mark, here on the map. Now, we've all moved around, live in different places, and teach in different places. So the problem is we had a lack of information flow. And they were assumptions made. Now, we were talking about planning something. And I said, it might be a good idea if we make a Google Sheet to share so we can show the workflow that's going on within the group. Now, somebody said, to be fair, there already is a Google Sheet. Now, this expression, to be fair, what do you think it means? Is it positive? Is it good? Or is it bad? Just put a G or a B or a plus or a minus in the chat quickly. To be fair. Negative, negative. Wait for a couple more. Oh, interesting. Middle, negative. I'm surprised. You guys are getting it right. Um, most people think that it's a positive, to be fair. <clears throat> when you say to be fair to an American, we think fight. This is starting an argument. Everybody else, because I asked the entire committee, what do you think to be fair meant? Everybody thought it meant actually. In actuality, a Google Sheet really exists. When I asked the person who said, to be fair, what was your intention? Everybody else said they thought it was actually, and it was a positive. Actually, he meant it as a fight. So, out of business English professionals, we didn't catch the proper meaning. Result is, I'm still waiting for that Google Sheet to come. Now, this is coming out of Japan. This was part of a survey which had about 30 questions. If you had 30 questions with this amount of text for the question and this amount of text for the answer, would you bother? It's way too wordy. But in Japan, this is what Japanese like. Everything spelled out to the letter. Me being an American, I would have got to question four and said, forget it. I don't have time for the survey. Now, I had the business in Brazil and my teachers came from different parts of the world. I had an Australian, a New Zealand, a couple from UK, and two of us from America, and we were all located in Brazil. So we all were native speakers, but we had all lived in Brazil for years. What happened is we noticed that living there, that speaking Portuguese had affected our L1. And we were making simple mistakes that we never would have made in L1 living at home. But learning the second language had an effect on our first, leading to miscommunication. Another example, one of my business partners, 
a Brazilian. We've been working together and friends for probably seven, eight years. And she didn't understand what I was saying. And we talked all the time. So this is a constant problem of miscommunication. Now add to it the fact that people in business are using things like Google Translate. And it's a mess. Google Translate is much better than it was even five years ago. But there's still a lot of mistakes. Now, I had this situation where I was dealing, planning um, a pre-conference PCE in Brazil. And we were reaching out to one of the publishers. I didn't know that the person working for the publisher didn't speak English. So she put everything into Google Translate and totally missed the entire meaning of everything that I wrote. Fortunately, we had somebody mix in between. Now, let's take a look at one of the root problems. This was from a British company. We will also be interviewing John. However, I imagine that won't be your concern. That won't be your concern. Positive or negative thing to say. Do you think it's okay? You think it's rude? We got one plus. A bit rude. Positive. Okay. Yeah, very good. Okay. You see, even here, we're English teachers. We take it a different way. And when I asked the committee, here's where the committee people are from, what they thought, some people thought it was arrogant. Some people thought they were being firm. Some people thought they were being insensitive. It really is insensitive. Now, won't be your concern means it shouldn't matter to you. It's not important to you. It makes no difference. It's not an issue. Won't be your concern. It's not what the person meant to say. And this is a British speaker. But taken by an American. Ah, interesting. It's rude in Lebanese. So perhaps it would have been better to say, I am hoping that this is not an issue for you. That is what the person meant to say. Or I'm hoping this is not an issue. I hope this meets your approval. So we even have differences through between native cultures. Of course, it gets much worse when we go overseas. Now, here's a little conversation. The British. I would like to inquire as to whether or not you should be attending my session on Saturday. Please respond at your earliest convenience so that I may plan accordingly. The response email. Another Brit, thank you very much for your email. This is to inform you that I will be attending your session on Saturday and that I am indeed, <coughs> sorry, looking forward to participating in it. Of course, they're British, they're very polite. So thank you very much for your timely response. I will make note of your attendance and will look forward to your presence with us. Until then. <laughs> a little wordy. Here's the American version. You coming Saturday? Let me know. Yes, I'm excited. Great. See you. It's the same conversation. It took the Brits 88 words. It took the Americans 12. 
That's a big difference. Now, coming Saturday, what's this? Ah, thank you, Doris. Here's the conversation now over what's up. Coming Saturday? Ooh, something's missing. Oh, yeah, the smiley. So look at how communication is changing. It's getting much more direct. And it needs to be. Because being a little more direct and with the proper choice of words will do a better job of communicating. Okay? Cultural communication norms. Now, I have a thing. Um, let's see. Somebody here. Um, Alexandra. Alexandra sent me an email. She asked me, will you be doing this on Facebook Live? Can you send me the link? Okay, so I know what the question was. She knows what she asked for. So, to save time, I hit reply. I put, here you go, and put the link. She didn't need an explanation of, oh, Alexander, thank you so much for asking for the link, and here you go. I tend to put very short responses. And this is what people say about my style. Americans get to the point quickly. People think I'm rude. People think I'm a man of few words. Obviously not when I'm talking. But I'd like to get right to the point. And this actually bothers British people because they consider me a little rude, as they consider most Americans. Think about other cultures. Now, this is all because of the thing that we call high context and low context. And you'll see that there's a spread. And we'll talk about the differences here. Now, Americans, Germans, Australians, Swiss tend to be low context. And then if you look at the Asian, the Arab, Southern Europeans, South Americans tend to be high context. What does that mean? Now, different things. High context people tend to be very indirect with their conversation. So interactions tend to be very wordy. They don't get right to the point. Low context cultures are very direct and tend to immediately get to the point. So in high context, what we're looking at is indirect, implicit, and a lot of, lot of nonverbal communication. Where in low context cultures, more explicit. When we look at the associations between them, low contexts tend to be task-centered, goal-oriented, and logical, where high context cultures tend to be group-oriented, and they think more of the relationship within the group. Americans think about the task. Japanese think about the relationship of the group. High context people in relationship, they look to get this connection. They look at long term um, professional connections, and it takes time to build these. Americans know we tend to be individuals and we tend to be more discreet. So, to break it down in communication, with high context, what's not said is usually more important 
than what's said in communicating. In low context, what's said is more important. So it's the opposite. And here's where we get problems now working around the world. So high context, many things are left unsaid, but with too many words. And in high context, few words give the message, but not everybody understands what the message is because the message tends to be too wordy. Intonation and stress, expressions, in both facial and verbal expressions are very important in the impact of meaning in high context. What's that in the road? A head? Hold it! <laughs> I'm sorry, hold, hold a second. No, dear, no. What's that in the road ahead? <laughs> Not what's that in the road ahead. <laughs> Listen, it's only a bicycle. Out in the gate, she'd be up in a minute. Oh, go on. Ooh, what's this thing called, love? Hold it, stop! No, look, it's... What is this thing called, love? <laughs> okay, a little bit more fun, but to show you how important intonation can be. Now, let's talk about meeting culture. What I find working with these meetings and working with people from all over the world, discussion means success. For an American, success is a decision. Now, for me, it drives me crazy to spend two hours in a meeting where after two hours, the decision was made to have another meeting. That makes me crazy. Non-Americans are happy with that. They think, oh, success. For me, it drives me up a wall. Perhaps this is the difference between the world liking football or soccer and Americans not being big fans. We don't believe in a tie. We want to win. We need a decision. So for us, Discussion equals wasted time. So a 60-minute meeting to decide on another meeting. This is why stand-up meetings have become part of business culture, because they're shorter. They get to the point. Okay? Now, two great books that... I recommend everybody who's going into business English to read right here. Take a snapshot of it or check the recording. It's When Cultures Collide and The Culture Map. And what these talk about are the differences between the cultures and it's going to help you with teaching your people how to communicate. For instance, in the United States, we have a structured individualism. That's where management usually makes the decisions and then things go down. In France, the decision is made at the top and it goes all the way to the bottom. According to the book, you have in Poland external pressures affect what happens. And you can look at this through history. Here's trickle-down management. And see how the history of a country affects the communication style. Wait. I'm going to skip through this. Um, pride. Pride is another problem. Um, when you have miscommunications, if you talk to certain cultures, certain cultures will not say that they don't understand. So if you ask someone, do you understand everything? They will say, yes. What did I mean? 
I don't know. Because it's their country culture to not say they don't understand. So what we need to work on more is active listening. And we need to teach active listening. And we need to teach everybody communication skills. Ask, do you mean this? Could you tell me more? This is what I think. This is reflexive questioning. This is answering back. Is there any chance we need to work on this? Because remember, if you saw my other talk, I always talk about this, the difference between accuracy and fluency. Now, let me ask you, type in the chat, which is more important, accuracy or fluency? Just put an A or an F. Fluency. I get is Corina and Doris the only one talking? I get some A's. A both. An F. An A. Well, if you're talking about general English, I agree fluency is more important. General English. But I'm talking now about teaching business English. Think about who is speaking? It's a waiter, a hotel clerk, a cabbie, a salesperson, people on the street, a tourist. Or is it a doctor, a lawyer, a pilot? And what becomes more important is here on the left, for a waiter and a hotel clerk, fluency is important. But when we look at the other side, Accuracy is more important when we're talking business. One word, one letter, one phrase can make a difference between life or death, a contract being signed or not, millions of dollars, or a plane crash. One single word or phrase. So accuracy becomes more important. And we as business English teachers have to understand that. And it's a hard transition to make from just teaching fluency. Now, I'll give you an example. Uh, this is something that happened to me years ago when I was teaching in Brazil. I was teaching to a Brazilian company who just partnered with a Canadian company. And the people from Canada were flying in. And they said, we'll be there next Tuesday. Okay, so let's say today is November 17th. Okay. Today is Saturday the 17th. The Brazilian next Tuesday means the 20th. To the Canadian, it means the 27th. Now, what happened is the Brazilians showed up at the airport on the 20th to pick up the Canadians. And this is because we handle these expressions differently. Next Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, the following Tuesday, Tuesday next, Tuesday week. We need to be more specific because in different cultures, these all mean different Tuesdays. So we need to start using the date. Same with the time. Back of six. This is an expression I never knew. Does that mean what? The back of six. So we need to be specific and we need to teach our students to be specific in everything. In, com in communication and in their emails. 
Be specific. Say Saturday, November 17th at the time zone and start using UTC as a common time zone. Use things like date and time to check the time zones. Remember, tomorrow is already today in Asia. So when I put, I'll talk to you tomorrow, that's different. And quite frankly, think about it. When we're, when we're looking at emails, do we actually look at when the email was written and sent? Usually not. We look at when we received it. So if the email came in two days ago, whose time zone is this? I'm going to skip ahead a bit. So we need to reduce and use reflective questioning. So are you saying, am I correct? What you're saying is, what we need to do is communicate more by asking questions. Is this what you mean? I'm not positive what you mean. Is what you're saying. Okay, so reflexive questioning. Skip through. Um, so, what I wanted to do is open it up to a little bit of a discussion and see what you have for questions. So, I'm going to stop sharing. And I want to hear from you. So, questions, comments, feel free to turn on your cameras. Don't be shy. Type in the chat if you want. Oh, you're blocked from turning on your cameras, right? Can you raise your hands? Hi, Karina. No, I don't think we are blocked. Try it. Just click, click on the uh, on the camera at the bottom of the yep. uh, on the toolbar and unmute yourselves. Okay. Well, if Karina's turned herself yes. on, everybody can. Yes. So, <laughs> cameras on. Let me see your smiling faces. It's part of communication. Yeah. You're right. That is you know, a message already, you know? That is a message already, yes? Yes, <laughs> by not turning off on your cameras, you're sending me a nasty message. <laughs> right. So I want to see all your faces. Hi, Tamari. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Danusha has visualized Hi. herself as well. <laughs> I want to see everybody here. Amazingly, I just did my last webinar before this, and everybody turned on their camera. It's got to be a first. Um, but that was good, because I can see the communication that's going on. <coughs> Sorry for the voice. Run your antivirus after this webinar, okay? I suggest it. But it's not COVID. So, any questions? It's late in Georgia. <laughs> I can imagine you're, you're a few hours ahead of me. Um, some questions. Corina, I know you have to have a question. <laughs> um, well, actually, I, I'm pretty tired. I've been teaching for... 10 hours today, but it's very interesting. And uh, thank you so much for um, uh, the, the concept, uh, the, the ideas uh, you've just run by us. I haven't been teaching business English in quite a while, but I do remember that uh, miscommunication uh, arises from uh, cultural difference. Uh, well, I, I'm not Polish, I'm Romanian, but I mm -hmm. do admit that uh, we, we have uh, lots of uh, common points. We are also a high context culture, but the newer generations are 
verging towards uh, American pragmatism. I myself, even if I'm pushing 50, I'm being constantly drawn towards uh, conciseness and uh, mm -hmm. directness, uh, and uh, probably because I'm uh, um, uh, my time is running out slowly, but constantly. Oh. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> um, well, I, I think one of the good things about the internet, social media, and texting is we're becoming much more direct. And I think communication is actually going to improve as a result of that. Because when you look at these things with the long, drawn out emails, mm -hmm. it makes me yeah. crazy. You know? They, they are tiresome and they uh, hinder communication, really. Yes. Yeah. And Anita asks a good question here in the chat Wouldn't asking those questions repeatedly be considered a nuisance? Yes, they might be. But wouldn't miscommunicating in a business deal be a lot more annoying. <laughs> Imagine if I said, um, I have a few problems, Tamari, with your presentation. And she didn't hear the uh. And she goes, oh, wonderful. He has few problems. Everything's great. There's a major miscommunication with just one letter. Mm -hmm. Think about the difference. I've been teaching my students for years the difference between can't and cannot. Don't use can't because even Americans and Brits cannot understand the difference. So use cannot. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. You know, you listen to the accents, it's asking for trouble. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do, I gave you a lot of different information, but I want you to realize there's a lot we have to look at as business English professionals. And we cannot just walk from teaching young learners and teaching teenagers and then expect to walk into a business English environment and do well. Yes, if we're teaching beginning English, we're okay, but not when we hit advanced levels. Um, let me see, we have certificates. <clears throat> what are the main qualities of a leader or manager? <laughs> I would say, first of all, good communication skills because everything starts there you know i can't um i uh, i'll pick on tamari all day because i've known tamari for years but um you know if i'm tamari's boss if i can't properly communicate to her to do something without making her upset or without giving her information that she doesn't understand, I'm not a very effective leader. So that's on me. So as a leader, I need to work on my communication. So does she, but I have to do it first as the leader. And Tamara, you speak fine. You're just my example. Um, how am I preparing myself for multicultural business meetings? <laughs> um, usually it's vodka. No, I'm kidding. Um, what I do is I do take a look sometimes at these culture maps. It depends who I'm meeting with. Um, for instance, if I'm meeting with Russians or I'm meeting with Brazilians, I pretty much know what I'm up against. I lived in Brazil and did business there for years. I still do. And I've been in Poland now for five and a half years, teaching Russians, Belarusians, and some Polish. So I kind of know what I'm up against. But if I'm dealing with a new client like Japanese, I do a little studying. 
And just as a refresher, just to make sure that I realize where they're coming from. Now, for example, if I'm dealing with India, India is one of the countries where I've had problems. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to make it. <clears throat> I've had problems with dealing with India in the past because they hear the words, but they get a different meaning. And I having a conversation with a company in India, I love to tell this story. The platform we used was from India. We were teaching A1 students on the platform in Brazil. This is the early days before Zoom. If there was a technical problem, they were to get in touch with customer service in India. Now, these are A1 Brazilians. And I get somebody from India. Yes, please just go to the top right hand corner, click on number two, and you will do it. You know, they talk very quickly. They talk very technically. And I said, we have a problem. There's a problem with communication. They don't understand me. I'm their teacher. No, sir, my English is perfect. I talk very... And I got called a racist. <laughs> it's a difference between the way we speak. I'm sure, you know, I, I talk to people here in Poland. I don't think I've upset anybody yet by saying something wrong. Maybe I have. Tamari is... <coughs> Hang on. <laughs> I may not make it much longer, <laughs> but yeah, so <laughs> unfortunately, I don't know if I can answer much more. <clears throat> Give me a minute. Who would like to talk? I can tell you a story from my today's lesson. Good. Today we were working, I was working with my students on negotiations and uh, I gave them the introduction uh, uh, about negotiation styles, negotiations in different cultures and so on. And one of my students uh, was listening to me uh, and uh, he was chewing gum, yes, and he made a huge bubble, yes, really <laughs> impressive. I was really impressed by the size and, uh, uh, and I told him, well, that is really impressive. But do you realize that in, in, in Poland, at Polish universities, it is not welcome, yes, that you chew your gum during, during the lectures. And then I told them the story of my, uh, my uh, situation from the past when I went to study in the States and I entered the classroom for the first time. Uh, uh, everybody in the classroom was chewing gum. And, you know, at that time, we were not taught about cultural differences, yes? <laughs> so I was under culture shock, a huge culture shock. The teacher was also chewing gum. She was a young woman, beautiful woman. She, uh, uh, she sat on the desk, yes, and she had a short uh, skirt with cuts on the sides. Uh, her lovely legs were showing. Nobody, you know, nobody paid attention to that yes mm -hmm. evidently that was a normal thing everybody chewing gum i yeah. you know and i learned this way i learned about america how different american culture mm -hmm. uh, at a university was uh, from polish culture at my university where i was supposed to sit quietly not move not do anything yes so uh, i reminded my my students about that situation and that gave them a laugh <laughs> Because well, right now we talk about cultures, yes? We yeah. talk about intercultural uh, communication, so it's much easier. But at that time, a lot of shocks. <laughs> well, this was, I remember the first time I, I did a talk in Hungary, and actually it was Russell Stannard had just done a plenary before my talk, and he came up to me and he says, Oh, Rob, it was the worst talk I ever did. And I said, no, I've heard this talk. 
It was great. He said, oh, no. People just sat there, dead faced, no questions, no responses. And I said, you're crazy. I went and did my talk. Same thing. Dead faces. Everybody sitting there. I remember one older woman sitting in the front the whole time. I thought she wanted to kill me. She walked up to me at the end and said, that was the best talk I've ever heard. <laughs> and I said, I saw you. You were like this. It's culture. You don't ask questions. You don't talk back to your teacher. You're taught that. Same thing here in Poland. It took me time to get used to that. Because in America, I fought with my teachers all the time. In Brazil, every single one of these cameras would be on and everybody would be trying to fight to talk. In fact, it's hard to shut them up in Brazil. You ask a teacher a question and there goes your hour. Look at the difference in culture here. You guys won't turn the thing on. So think about business. Think about communication. And like I said, hopefully here, we're all C1, C2. But imagine if we're not. So um, what else? Any other questions, comments? Take advantage, I can speak for this minute. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all of us. Yes. Happiest New Year. Maybe the trend, the negative trend will be reversed. Finally. Yes. And we will all be healthy and there will be no viruses around us. Just positive yes. people and positive energy. We're hoping. Um, when is our next face-to-face -face Polish event? Uh, September? No, I, I don't remember any face-to-face -face events. There are many online events, uh, generally uh, in the webinar series. Uh, so in January, I, I've already pasted the information about some of them uh, in the chat box, but mm -hmm. uh, no face-to-face, -face, not really face-to-face -face events. Yes, we, we are all limited, you know, and in fact, uh, tomorrow I'm going at my university, I'm going to have the last chance to talk to my students face to face because on yeah. Friday we go online. Yes, and we will yeah. stay online until uh, until um, um, the end of, uh, yes, the 9th of January, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. Uh, who knows what is, what is going to be next? Yes, so we don't yep. know. Well, hopefully we'll be traveling next year. We're planning our BSIG for next November. I won't say where. We're planning it as face-to-face. -face. Um, but, of course, if we have to go online, we go online. Hopefully, Ayatefel Poland will be face-to-face -face next fall. Hopefully. Yes, we are. <laughs> right. But uh, take, into, uh, take into consideration the hybrid version as well, yes? So that if anything goes wrong, yes, the, we have a chance to see you at least in the small box. <laughs> well, I want to see everybody's face and not, you know, I'm going to show up with a mask with my name on it, with just black and sit in the audience face to face like that. Let's see how you guys like it without cameras on. <laughs> so just yes, please do turn on your cameras and 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 then uh, wave uh, wave Merry Christmas <laughs> at all of us. Yes, Merry Christmas, yeah. Happy New Year. Yes, use some symbols. Yay! Good <laughs> people exist. Yes, people exist. Yes, I know you're alive. <laughs> You know, this is the only way we can see each other, is yeah. here. Yeah, that's absolutely, you are absolutely right. Take advantage. Do you allow your students to get away with this? I wouldn't. <laughs> 
you know, I personally do my best, but you know, when I start, when I uh, when I put on, when I start sharing the screen, it's very difficult to control them. Yeah. Okay? That's the moment when they have a tendency to disappear. <laughs> I saw a great one. I'm doing it now, where they actually record themselves on the cell phone, paying. It looks like they're paying attention, and then they play it back on the screen. So it looks like they're actually looking like, I actually think Mikhail has done that here. He's like just a recording, sitting there paying attention, you know. <laughs> it's a great one. I wish I thought of it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, just make a nice loop recording and play it back. <laughs> Okay, I see that right. you have a lot of uh, wishes in the chat box uh, for everyone attending, and it's really yeah. nice. Bye, Tamari. Yeah, thanks, everybody. And thank you. Please, if you're not a member of IATEFL Poland, you should be. Yeah, definitely. Right? All the information is in, was included in the chat box, yes? So there is no problem. You can reach it. You can go to, you just write IATFL Poland and you find us uh, on the internet. It's not problematic. It's just a matter of decision making, <laughs> proper decision making. Very good. How to become a member? Ah, very easy. Doris, <laughs> you go to the website iatefl.pl mm -hmm. and in there is all the information about how you sign up and you can be a member like I am I've been a member for years <laughs> yes that's right <laughs> yep anybody here in Gdansk oh yeah no yep mm -hmm. We're going to have something face-to-face -face in Gdansk one day. I know. Gosha is lucky. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we did one. We actually did one a few years ago. We did a um, a business English one at one of the local business schools, one of the courses here. And we've done some at the university. Um, I remember Andre was out here from Sketchen. And um, I miss it. A lot of great teachers here. Hopefully we'll meet again face to face very soon. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. Okay, so right. thank, thank you very much. Thanks and for see, having me. Uh, the next webinar that Rob is going to present to us is in February, don't forget. But in the meantime, there will be more other webinars. So welcome, welcome. Goodbye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Thank you.